Good morning campers, today I'm back in beautifully sunny Falmouth, it's always sunny in Falmouth, uh, to visit what I regard as the best IPA brewery in the country, and that's Verdant. Now full disclosure, uh, I'm down here to help them out with some marketing stuff, and in particular their crowdfunding campaign that's been going on. They're paying me in t-shirts, awesome. And I thought what better opportunity than to talk about double IPAs with one of the guys who makes the best ones in the country and kind of pioneered uh, that hazy double IPA style along with Cloudwater. Uh, so we're gonna have a chat about what it takes to make a great double IPA, why they're so attractive to drinkers even though they get you absolutely ruined because <laughs> they're so drinkable and so strong. Uh, and also talk a little bit more about the recipes and the stuff that goes on behind the scenes at Verdant that makes it so good. So tune in, especially if you're a home brewer, there's some great tips coming. So I'm sat here with James, head brewer and founder of Verdant. Uh, you may remember him from the last video that we did, almost in this position, in this temperature. Almost. It's actually warmer in January, I think, when we filmed it. It was, yeah. Last, but at least we've got some cold chain beers as a result. <laughs> Let's crack the thing that you've been canning all of today, which is pulp. Yes. Um, I've already had one today, so we'll see how that goes. Um, <laughs> uh, but while we do that, I want you to tell me about putty first. Okay. Um, because it's the beer that's still your highest rated, I believe. So yes. can you tell me what the, the concept behind it was and how it started and um, where Putty the name came from? came about, I think it was the first Hop City. Yep, uh, 20, so it's Northern Monks Festival. Yeah, 2017. And we just, we needed, we knew we needed to brew something big and special. And yeah, because you had the Alchemist and you had yeah, there were and other half there. There were so lots of to... heroes there, really, yeah. and we were like, "Oh, let's have a look at what hops we've got." So we, <laughs> so we did. We had a look, and it was like, "Well, maybe we won't do a Citra one." I've really, we've always really wanted to do a galaxy-focused thing at the time, and um, I guess it just kind of evolved from that. We didn't have enough galaxy to do like a single hop galaxy, and then we started to think what hops would work well with it. And that's how Mosaic came about, and then Azaka playing a sort of supporting role to them. But it was a massive um, shot in the dark, really. We just right. we just went for it. And uh, the grist mix of Golden Promise. Um, I think it has extra pale in as well, so that's actually incorrect. There. It's, a type of <laughs> um, it's got wheat, oats, flaked wheat, all that sort of stuff. But I mean that kind of set the benchmark really for all of our dippers mm. in terms of the grain bill that really hits the sweet spot. So what, what had you done before putty? You'd done pulp? I think we had, yeah. I can't remember what though. Maybe we'd done, done PSI, PSI beforehand. I think, yeah. I think so we you did knew that how, to, how to get the juice, not the sweat out of mosaic, but otherwise it was kind of yeah, all I new. like the sweat. You like the sweat? Yeah, I do. It's on there, isn't it? 1970s squash club. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> So when you're approaching a dipper, what yeah. are the, the, the things that you'd be worried about? So when you said it was a shot in the dark, what were you worried you'd end up with? Um, I think not knowing the hops well enough, them right. being relatively new varieties to, to us, or me, you know, all of us really. Um, knowing the sort of, hit, Galaxy is a difficult hop to get hold of generally. We're, we're pretty lucky now and we've, we've secured moving forwards with it. And you hear about it being tropical and and sort of just bringing its juiciness to the to the beer, um, but it was the first time we'd really used it, so mm. we were we were taking a gamble really. And it um, can end up quite earthy and aggressive. It's I think, really galaxy. aggressive. Yeah. It's bittering. It's hugely aggressive. It's got very high um, cohulamone uh, levels, which essentially means if you if it, if you use it hot side, it will just be very rasping. So. That's maybe why, like the planets, single hop uh, galaxy, which is almost a dipper, really. It's just like a very strong IPA. It's quite bitter, mm. even though there's not much in the way of bittering hops going on at all. It's just the character of galaxy. Yeah, coming through. even a small amount, will, you'll know about. Absolutely, it. but there seems to be a real fan base for um, that sort of slightly rasping, grassy bitterness that it brings to the 
to the beer. So who am I to argue? No, but putty was pretty low in IBU as far as I remember. It's definitely yeah. there. It's not quite, you know, like the, like the Gus and those kind of guys that are just pillowy juiciness. Yeah. But it was pretty low. Yeah, absolutely. So you reined in the Galaxy. Yeah, I think we reined it in a bit. Mosaics look a lovely soft bittering quality to it. It's related to Simcoe, which is also really soft with its bittering. So the, the hops were the unknowns. Yeah. You're, you're, you're literally dialing down and looking at the Alphas, the Betas, the Cohumulones, and deciding at what point in the both the hot side and the cold side they should yeah. be added yeah and that's that's what makes you nervous if you think you put it in the wrong place you've looked at its attributes um, and then if you put it in the wrong place you could end up with something you weren't intending yeah i think the it's that word balance isn't it it gets banded around a lot and you know double ipa extremely <laughs> unbalanced <laughs> beers but even in a very unbalanced beer it's you've, the drinking experience still has to be relatively balanced you know the flavors are full on there yeah. might be some chunky bitterness and the aroma bonkers you know you can smell it a foot away all that kind of stuff but you still got to it's got to be relatively easy drinking and you want to come back to it and maybe even pop a second can a couple of years ago stone revamped uh ruination yeah. to sort of cater to a new market in which i think they reduced the bitterness a bit up to the hop aroma made it a bit less dank and piney yeah would you ever, with some of the beers that you do, start amping the bitterness up as palates dry out again? Uh, yes. Or is it only as your palate yeah, kind, it <laughs> kind is, of ramps up? It is really tricky, yeah. Uh, you know, you, you, there's this weird middle ground. Are, are we making beers to satisfy what people want or are telling us, or are we making beers to satisfy our palates, or is it a mixture of the two? Hmm. What is it? What's going on? I know that my palate's always changing, yep. you know. Um, almost daily for me yeah, yeah absolutely so it's a really tricky thing i think it's about you know at a company level we're just always talking about the beers i'm always asking the guys and girls you know what was your favorite this week and why and you know and we sit down and drink them and talk about what's going on in them and you know i'm not sure about this hop or that hop or you know how's the bitterness on this and yeah you know the, each this week i think there was a complete split decision between the three packaged beers like someone chose pulp someone chose the photon one someone chose neil that's like mm. that. great guys <laughs> we're really narrowing this down it's okay um, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a, a, a football manager having a tough team selection yeah it's a good problem to have absolutely yeah, yeah. i mean i i really hanker after brewing a proper west coast ipa but i mean pulp what we're drinking right now i mean obviously it's very juicy but the the yeast is Yeast Purely USO5? Yeah, it's just USO5. And yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's 50, 60 IBU as far as I can it tell. It is, so yeah, it's, it's up there. Pretty. It just doesn't look like one. No, it's, I mean, that's it, it will totally settle out. Pulp always does that. It starts out like that. About two weeks later in the can, it will be very clear. Hmm. And you did your collab with Cloudwater fairly recently that I thought was banging as well. Quite yes. similar to, to yes. the pulp that I'm tasting yeah. here, actually. It was sort of marketed like a brand new idea uh -huh. like a east meets west yeah but actually this is kind of east meets west yeah as well which yeah. might explain why it's so fucking good yeah yeah no it, i think so yeah this this harks back to something which i think i was talking about in the video we did months and months ago but it's to do with this core range pulp being at the top end of them so light bulb head band bloom and then pulp all based around uso5 but the brewing principles I would say were for all of them and still very heavily weighted to the East Coast. So, you know, there were flaked things in the mash. Um, chloride was higher. Uh, that we reigned in the bitterness, even though now it feels like it's bitter, but back then not really. Yeah. So all these things were edging it towards a New Englandy type thing, but the yeast was very focused as being sort of dry and very attenuate, 80% attenuation, that kind of thing, which dragged it the other way. So yeah, it was definitely pulp is this thing right in the middle. As I think headband is bloom, maybe, a, yeah, it probably is actually, thinking about it. I think bloom's super jammy, yeah, which takes away from the mm. slight West Coast vibe it has, yeah, but so it is, it's still from that. Yeah, so they, that's it, Those that core range are, they sort of hover around yeah. in the middle. And uh, I think that's what piqued people's interests initially. 
So there's a there's a balancing act to all that kind of thing. That's, that's I mean that's what brewing is is balancing. Yeah. Everything. I would say that's the best word for it. Balancing the elements. Which is I often think the brewers should take more of a kind of chefy outlook on mm. brewing and look at that balance. You know, you could make a beer that tastes entirely like grapefruit or something like that which you know to some extent pulp does but the beers that you've done that have been really exciting have been like the putties which have had all kinds of different things going on everyone gets a different thing from it yeah. and that's what's really exciting for chefs and what i think mm. is increasingly really exciting about beer as we learn the ingredients yes i couldn't agree we're more doing, with you know, that, really. chefs know most ingredients whereas a, a brewer gets a new hop every cu- couple of times yeah. a year and goes oh shit we need to learn what this does now no absolutely they I mean, it was the love of hops, uh, you know, falling in love with them basically as a home brewer, um, which is why I'm here now. You know, like literally, the ha- the freezer at home was had food in one day, and then, <laughs> and then hops. had hops in the next day, and it was sort of o- lit overflowing, and um, very understanding wife. And, uh, but that was it. just, they were so exotic smelling. And the minute I realized that these beers that I was drinking in 2010, 2011, that had all of a sudden I was getting grapefruit notes and, you know, uh, really exciting. I was thinking, gosh, where's this coming from, you know? And then figuring out it was coming from the hops. And I was like, wow, from a flower? <laughs> and then- uh, It still blows my mind when I yeah, think about it. I, I just get really excited chopping open a bag of citrus still you know when if uh, one of the other guys is making the work i'm usually hovering there or thereabouts <laughs> waiting the, for that moment as the yeah. bag gets opened or i mean even more so if it's a new variety or an experimental variety like we've just done used 431 we've just used 472 they're all that's related to one that was 438 that's now got a, taking notes. Yeah, it's now got a name. So next year, I would imagine you'll start to see people putting Sabro on the labels. Yeah. There you go. Um, so yeah, they're all kind of interrelated, but quite different. And I find that really interesting as well. You know, they could, the same parents produce extremely different plants. Yeah, which is where the whole US kind of revolution came from. It was yeah. people trying to reduce the uh, the fallibility to different like mildews and stuff like that. And create a cascade <laughs> i know it's just Holy crazy shit. isn't it and <laughs> yeah. we well we you know the other day we were chatting weren't we johnny about new zealand hops and their, their heritage essence essentially being mm. like halatau and sars mm. and then you've got nelson sovin motueka and all the other lovely fruity yeah gooseberry-ish. which have lovely soft bitterness and great for lagers but also i mean nelson can be quite aggressive and yeah absolutely it can when it's in use in big quantities yeah. Um, anyway, so I've got two final questions for you. Uh, one of which involves cracking Fruit Car Site Exhibition, okay. which is your second highest rated beer. Firstly, you touched on water profiles, which people don't really think about and something you guys take very seriously at Verdun. Yeah. What, why, why is it taking so long for people to kind of tune in to what's important about a water profile? And what can you add as a home brewer and what can you look out for as a drinker? I mean, that's a really good example, actually. The, the, the feel between those two right um, on the palate so <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's like a smoothie yeah and that's like a orange juice yes yeah so and they're not really worlds apart in terms of uh, the ingredients the words like sulfate and chloride get bounded around a lot and and it's people talk about the ratios between them but it's not really the ratio so much that's important it's sheer quantity yeah <laughs> it's just how much how much you're putting in and where yeah. you're putting it as well you know is it all in the mash because you need calcium in in a mash um is it all there or do you need or are you putting some in the kettle purely to try and add something to the drinking experience and we've played around with everything but essentially sulfate makes a bit cri- more crisp and they have always said that it emphasizes the hops and I don't really agree with that. I think what it does is it emphasises hop bitterness through cr- making the beer more crisp. Right. Um, and that's that's an interesting discussion in its own right, really, is the fact that, you know, there's still this perception, I think, in the world that if a beer's hoppy, it's bitter. 
and it's you know which still... New England has categorically gone nope. no yeah <laughs> hoppy means flavour yeah and um, so I think that's that's probably why there's been this movement away from sulfate heavy West Coast IPAs to chloride heavy East Coast IPAs so chloride calcium chloride is something you add to stouts and darker beers to give them some really good body along with like a, a stout would traditionally have things like flake barley in yep and you'd go for a, a high chloride wort um, to give give the body and smoothness at which the flake barley will be adding body and head retention and all that kind of thing so essentially it seems like we're making IPAs now with sort of a stout water profile and a kind of a stout grist minus the dark malts that seems i think that's kind of what's been going on it's all out body cool well so my other question regarding fruit car site exhibition yeah what do you think it is about citra hops that means it's the hop wow yeah citra is it is pretty amazing i think you go i mean when i smell a fresh bag of citra i get an almost white wine citrusy thing going on um i think i'll get my head too close because i'm too excited yeah there's (laughs) there's definitely a dank sweatiness to it but there is to all of the really lovely hops i think there's something far deeper and more pungent going on like umami yes Yeah. yeah exactly and um i think all the good hops and i think all good flavor really has that Along with Citra, I'm a massive fan of Simcoe. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like Mosaic as well. It, it, they're, they're famous for a reason. Galaxy, yeah, exactly. Citra, and they're Mosaic, in demand. And... Simcoe, Nelson, all these hops, they're famous right now because they're great, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I don't really know what I expected when I asked that question, but yeah, because it, it's damn great and it's deep and it's slightly unusual and occasionally slightly funky. Mosaics are kind of like funky where you'd like, I don't know why I like that, because it's kind of sweaty, but it's yeah. also like like the yellow packs of juicy fruit chewing gum and it's also all this and this. And Absolutely. When your mind kind of boggles, it's much more interesting and exciting when yeah. the synapses start firing. No, I couldn't agree more. I think that's the that's it for me in a nutshell it's about the hop flavor being deep and complex not just a one note thing yeah so you've been brewing putties this is a fake can by the way this hasn't been brewed since january this year yeah um you said you'd never brew that again yet here we are for the third time i can't believe (laughs) well why did you say you never would and why have you first off the bat i didn't (laughs) (laughs) okay you're Um, always keen yeah uh, I, in my opinion, it's core range, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, we need to have a board meeting about that. <laughs> um, but I, I, I would love to see it as a regular beer, really. So yeah. that's going to be released fairly soon. Yeah. New Year, just. New Year, yeah. yeah. We like to, it seems to work really well to let it kind of relax over the christmas time <laughs> it seems to it seems to enjoy that it's a bit raw at the start yeah and then, and and then we well. then we let it then we can it after christmas and then it's like you know fuck your dry and dry and you <laughs> well yeah yes. <laughs> so guys if you do want a double ipa while your mate's not drinking yeah. and there, there's there's advantages there there's fun to be had absolutely um then watch out for putty coming out also watch out for the crowdfunder that these guys uh, are currently running um and it's going to be an amazing brewery. If you look at the video that I helped help, help them make, that new brewery is going to be incredible. And hopefully Putty will join the core range and be made in 35 hectolitre batches. It will. Um, which is uh, a dream come true. Uh, yeah. Thank you, James. Thank you. Any questions, do pop them down below. And if I can't answer them, then I'll pester James. Cheers. Cheers.